thought I was the best. Just once it'd be my turn. You wrote it on your chest, but it's another lesson learned. And this morning I shaved my pants. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Member That. Excuse me. Hello? Hey, you remember that show on MTV Made? Yeah. Yeah, where they were all like, I wanna be made, I wanna be the best. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was thinking about being made into a Hollister boy. <laughs> okay, okay. Sorry. That was weird. So welcome back to another episode of Remember That. I am 100% unprepared for today's video. <laughs> That's just kind of what happens when I like get involved in a movie review. Everything else in the world disappears. Nobody exists. I don't exist. My life doesn't exist. No other videos exist until I upload. So here we are. I'm unprepared. But the good news is I have a lot of background knowledge about this show. So today I wanted to know, do you remember a show on MTV called Made? And the intro was like, I want to be the first. I want to be the best. I want to be made. I want to be made. So this show would follow like a random teenager who had a goal of being made into whatever they wanted to be made into. So sometimes they wanted to be made into an athlete. Sometimes they wanted to be made into a singer, a rapper. Sometimes they wanted to be made into hot. Meet Rachel. She wants to get even by getting hot. MTV will give her the coaching she needs to get a new image. And MTV would assign them a maid coach, which was normally like an expert in their chosen field. Someone who was already excelling, who would try to kind of help them achieve their goal over the span of about six or seven weeks, I think it usually was. A lot of the maid coaches were super nice, but then a lot of them were like crazy mean. It's not good. It's gonna be an uphill battle. You can't make layups as easy as shot in basketball. Probably not gonna play. It's gonna be a long six weeks. You can't take it, you're wuss and get out of my gym. I knew he was bad. I just didn't know it was this bad. Another day with Mike. This ought to be fun. There's not that many out there that are less talented than them, to be honest with you. I would bet that Mike would make a team. And so we just got to see the whole process of them undergoing this transfer being made into stuff. I'm sure a lot of you are probably sitting there thinking, Jamie, do you have your own episode of Made? And the answer is, yeah, obviously. Henrietta wants to be made into an interpretive dancer, but can this piece of shit pull it off? First of all, can we talk about the fact that I had a body like a back road? Can you guys help me get back there? Help me. Anyway, like I said, I'm unprepared with this video. I don't really have any notes, so I think we should just watch it together. Let's start with That was me, several years ago, before I discovered Audible, where you can find the largest selection of audiobooks. You see, I was sick and tired of people judging my choice of reading material. I want to read my book in public, but prying eyes of dudes in parks made me so uncomfortable. With Audible, you can listen discreetly to your books of choice, and nobody will know how weird you are. Not a bookworm? Not a problem. In the Audible app, there are thousands of binge-worthy podcasts you can listen to anytime, anywhere. Want to take a walk but read at the same time? Listen to an audiobook. Do you want to climb around at the park but you're deep into a mystery thriller like Women in the Window? Climb away! I can't wait to hear what's next! As an Audible member, you will get one free credit every month good for any title in their premium section. And the app even lets you pick up where you left off. You know, in case you fall off the jungle gym like Jamie over here. If you're interested in trying Audible, you can go to audible.com slash Jamie or text Jamie to 500 500. You don't look like a bookworm no more. Hey, you wanna come play? As for me, I got some sports to play. Ask your peers about Audible. Side effects may include, but are not limited to, being more acceptable to dudes at the park, severe happiness, intense joy, a bountiful amount of knowledge, feelings of pleasant detachment from your monotonous, boring life, jealousy from friends due to their lack of using Audible, restful sleep from the soothing narrations. Rare but not very serious side effects include mild pain at the side of the earbud, device charge draining too quickly, and a nagging boss telling you to get off Audible and do your job. Thank you, Audible, for sponsoring today's video. By the way, this isn't a real book or a real author. 
is completely fictional. Let's start with Danielle's maid episode. Meet Danielle. She's always been known as the fat girl. Okay, yeah, I forgot to mention. One of the hallmarks of this series is that each episode would start off with meet Danielle or meet Steve. Meet Rachel. Meet Danielle. That's Julia. Meet Jake. Meet Allie. Meet Henrietta. And then they would follow that with like something bad about them. She's always been known as the fat girl. Chorus girl with two left feet is an unathletic loner. Gets zero attention from girls. He's a piece of hot trash in a burning dumpster. He's a total outcast. She's a fat <laughs> I always thought the intros were harsh. Can she trade in her flip-flops for fly hip-hop threads? Will she bust all the right moves at her big tryout? She's just a little bit worse than terrible. And can this square get straight in the eyes of the cooter? Can this piece of sh pull it off? The food's always falling out of her mouth. She's basically a pig. I mean, she's a really nice girl. Food's always falling out of her mouth. She always has like tons of cheese in her teeth. She's basically a big fat cow, but she's like super nice. She can't run. Danielle's always been bigger. She's flat out lazy. She's basically a pig. I'm already upset. Hey, can you believe that? No. Okay, I didn't think so. Meet Coach Julie. I wasn't so sure I'd pass her fitness test. I know you can hear me! Oh my gosh, I forgot the maid coach would always wake them up so aggressively. Out of bed, out of bed, up, up, let's go. Up. In fact, I think when we made my own episode of this, I made fun of that very thing. What? This lady has a straight up megaphone. Is that necessary? My first workout. She claimed she was gonna go easy on me. You will be stepping up and down on this step without stopping, no breaks, no water, no nothing. Mm, this is, you know what it's doing? It's bringing back traumatic flashbacks for me of being in gym class in high school and I don't like it. Okay, Danielle gets made. She uh, loses a few pounds. Lost 15 pounds. Runs a 5K, gets hair extensions, does a photo shoot and she is made into hot. I've been made and a whole new me. Which is, hey, that's cool. I probably would have wanted the exact same thing in high school. So let's watch the Screamo episode because this one I feel like is gonna be so metal. MTV made metal screamer Julia. I'll try to drown them out. <laughs> By being made into a hardcore metal screamer. One, two, three. Look who's laughing! Heck yes! You know what I loved about this show? The contestants who wanted to be made into something were always seemingly very polar opposite to whatever they wanted to be made into. That was a long sentence. Does that make sense? He's probably as far away from the rock and roller that he wants to become. So this girl, Julia, like when you look at her, you don't think that she's into screamo, death metal, hardcore rock. <laughs> I don't party, I don't smoke, I don't drink. So at first glance, you might look at Julia and be like, you know what, she looks like a beige Becky, but that, my friends, was the appearance. The metal kids in school, they have the attitude of just like not caring. Metal kids like to just do whatever we want. Dude, do you guys remember that emo haircut that guys had in high school? What I remember the most is that they would constantly toss it. And we were all like, oh my god. There's nothing more attractive than the dark and sensitive emo haircut head twitch. Do you agree? No. <laughs> And we don't care what anybody else thinks about it. Yeah, we don't care what anyone else thinks about it. That's why we take 45 minutes in the morning to make our hair look like we don't care what anyone thinks about it. Then she's gonna look like an idiot. Okay, thank you, Chase. Way to have confidence in your friend. All right, we're about to meet her maid coach. I'm nervous. I'm Elisa Whitegloves and I'm your maid coach. That's Elisa Whitegloves. Okay, nice to meet you. No way, her maid coach goes so hard. Look at that little hat. You know what that is? That is very steampunk. She was steampunk before steampunk was even a thing. I like the maid coach already. Nice hat. Do you want to try some screens? Tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, they're already going to start screaming in her bedroom when her parents are home. I'm nervous. I hope it's not cringe. <laughs> it's going to be cringe. There's... Shut up. And then there's, shut up. And then there's, shut up. Why does it sound so cool when she does it? I feel like people forget that there's an art to screaming. Shut up. Oh, no, I'm screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Mom and dad are downstairs just cleaning up the Chinese food mess. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. <laughs> I just picture her being like, Bill, can you pass me the shrimp fried shut rice? Up.
<laughs> there we go. The parents are on my level now. They're getting a kick out of it. Look at the dad. He cannot contain how funny it is. One, two, three. Look who's laughing! Oh! I'm not sure I could tell him apart. I think she's got a career. <laughs> Sorry guys. No shade to Julia. I don't know. It's just uncomfortable, but it's fun. It's fun comfortable. <gasps> Please tell me nobody else has ever used that word because that that should be that I'm putting that on a shirt 100%. Time to go to bed! <laughs> oh no, I'm gonna pee. Oftentimes I don't like the parents in this show. Like they can be really, I've seen a lot of episodes where the parents have been like non-supportive, no sense of humor or whatever, but this mom, this mom is so bussin. Super awkwardness. This is awkward sauce. <laughs> this is awkward sauce. This is super awky right now. Have you guys interested in auditioning for a band? He did not just say that. One of the kids said he was gonna wipe his butt with her invitation, with her flyer. Oh, kids are mean, man. This is also great. This whole band thing is bringing back a memory for me because I once auditioned for my friend's band and I went over there and I sang. How can you see into my eyes like open doors? Evanescence. I killed it, but I tied with my friend Kelly because they didn't want to hurt either of our feelings. So we both got to be in the band, but then the band never did anything. We didn't like win any Grammys or anything, so. That's the coolest story I've ever heard in my entire life. That's insane. It, can I hear it again? Do you have time? One, two, three, four. No more. One, two. No more. One, two. No more. One, two. No more. <laughs> No more. You know what? I can stew the scream if I go inward. If I do a little inward singing, like Rrr. I could totally be in a screamo band. Who's hiring? Who needs a screamer? Contact me. No more. No more. No more. Okay, first of all, that went from like, I could hear the change and that that went from like deep down here in the depths of her soul to like Rrr. Velociraptor. <laughs> Okay, she wants to be a screamer, not a singer, right? Why are we making her sing? They always put these kids in uncomfortable situations and then I get secondhand uncomfortableness and it is not fun, com fun, comfortable. All right, guys, it's time for them to perform. I'm so nervous. Dude. She's killing it. She looks like she was born to be a metal screamer. Cool, okay, next episode. Meet Rachel, a quirky outgoing sophomore with a big problem. She doesn't shut up. Every time I see her, I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> Again, with all the classmates insulting her. I guess these kids sign up for this when they would agree to be on this show, but man, it's harsh. I see her, I'm just like, ugh. My eye just burn from the ugliness. She's got glasses and a ponytail. She's a little short, little pudge. Is that mean? Yes, it's mean. And you just said it on MTV. And now it's on YouTube. Girl with the scrunchy hair gel. This is my coach, Princess Superstar. Princess Superstar, okay. I'm not trying to be mean, but I feel like that's a name a six-year-old girl would come up with when she's playing dress up. Oh, hi, sweetie, what's your name? <laughs> Princess Superstar. Is that mean? Yes, it's me. It actually reminds me of when I asked my niece one time what her cat's name was, and she was like, Ruby Red Crystals. She's a world-class DJ and recording artist with cool lyrics, a hot image, and attitude to spare. She's a world-class superstar with cool lyrics, a hot image, attitude to spare, and a crazy hairy guy in a speedo in a bathtub. Again, this is who I would hire. We need to figure out who you're going to this dance with. Yeah, so I forgot. There's always like some sort of event where the kid gets to actually test the new skills they've learned. So like Danielle ran a 5K, Julia and her band performed at like a concert. And I guess this girl's big test is going to the semi-formal dance with a date because that defines if the night was successful or not. Thought I was the best, just once it'd be my turn. You wrote it on your chest, but it's another lesson learned. Wow! And this morning I shaved my pits, and I got razor burn. This is what I don't understand is, I thought she wanted to be hot. I didn't think she wanted to be a singer. Why are they having her record a song, right? And she clearly doesn't even want to do it. She's crying about it and asking the other girl to do it. There's no reason to make me relive something every single time I sing that song, I relive everything. He's on. I asked Jason to the dance. Keep your fingers crossed. He said, wow. Oh my God. 
Oh, I had a date and a dance to get ready for. Wait, wow is equivalent to yes? What did I miss? He said wow. It's makeover time, it's makeover time, it's makeover time. A movie star. Okay, she looks adorable. You know who she looks exactly like? The girl who plays the daughter, Mel Gibson's daughter in What Women Want. She's her twin. Anyway. I don't think I sat down once. Like, I wasn't having to worry. I don't miss that dance move, man. It was not. Fun comfortable. And then, all of a sudden, my song came on. The princess had brought it over as a final surprise. It's just me, right? It's just me, Oh, okay, so they're gonna play the song she cut at the homecoming dance. Yes! Oh man, this is a great moment for us all right now. Ready? The kid she's telling is like. Did you say singing? Because, like, it kind of, I don't know, kind of sounds like you're just talking. Cool, so she was made into a hot singer. Uh, that's it for me today, guys. That was fun. I did not forget about this show. It lives rent-free in my brain. And it's just as epic as I remember it. Do you remember it? What else do you want to remember? Let me know in the comments down below, and we'll see you in the next one. TTYL. I'm not going to bed. Make us some money. This is so bossing. It just ain't right. It just ain't fair. I really miss when guys had emo hair. All that you need is exercise. That's it. Don't act like you like come in my room at like nine in the morning and go, let's go jogging. She's flat out lazy. Oftentimes when a young person is lazy, they may actually be clinically depressed. Teenagers get a lot of slack for being lazy, but really they shouldn't be lazy. Something might be wrong. There was a moment in my life that changed everything. These are pictures prior to my dad's death. After his death. Food was my there it is. Emotional trauma, guys. I wish that we could just go easy on teenagers with weight problems because there's always emotional trauma involved. Danielle, go easy on yourself, girl. Does <laughs> <laughs> that work? Dude, I wonder if I could find this one episode that I loved for this specific reason. The girl's name was Genevieve and she wanted to become a rapper. She was like the most non rapper seeming person, but she blew everybody away and was like, this is Genevieve. That's me, 16 year old Julia Carney from St. Peter's, Missouri. St. Peter's, Missouri? Uh, that's five minutes from me. <gasps> Dude, what if she still lives here and I could interview her? And that's why I want to be made into a metal screamer. Because nothing says I demand respect, like shredding your vocal cords to smithereens and then getting nodes on them, which has happened to me. Anybody can access anybody else in the world yeah. with a click of the mouse and they're safe sitting there behind their computer screen, right? So they can say whatever they want. They don't actually wish death upon you. They're just saying it for shock value. I want this is actually relevant advice, uh, even for today. I want to talk to her and her mom. I actually have a question for anyone who screams, who is in a screamo band or um, just likes to scream. How do you do that without hurting your vocal cords? Ever since I got nodes on my cords, just from being Tammy, I'm like obsessed with the health of my cords. I want to know the science behind it. Like where exactly do you place your soft palate and your larynx to be able to do this? I decided on the name. It's this too shall pass. Final decision. It doesn't. <laughs> you know, Arissa, I really appreciate your input on all, but I didn't even want you here in the first place because you're not a Christian. She's not a Christian! By the way, I'm teasing. I'm a Christian. I just really like that lady. MTV made Homecoming King episode part one. Let's try this. Okay, hold on. I recognize this music and this looks like it was filmed on an iPhone. So did somebody make their own episode of Made 2? Neptune Productions? Did we just become best friends? Anybody who made like real childhood home movies, I'm not talking like your parents filmed you with a camera. I'm talking like you were the director. I feel like we would get along. Princess Superstar had two chart hits in the UK, Bad Babysitter, which reached number 11 in 2002, and Perfect, which reached number three in 2007. Well, hey, if I wanted to be hot, that's who I would hire to coach me. And this morning I shaved my pants. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes. I love that so much. Yes, I appreciate that too. I just sent a weird audio recording to my manager. Cool.